Hello, happy Wednesday, my peaceful and profitable entrepreneurs. It is so good to see you. I'm very excited today to share this with you. This is just um, a fun conversation for me. Um, I'm going into my seventh year of business, which is just to me unbelievable. Um, so I'm ready to dive into that and really talk about a lot of that because I think it'll really support people. Um, but First, some housekeeping items. If you jump on, say hi, leave a comment, leave a message. Anything will get you entered to win my um, free masterclass I'm giving away. It's 90 minutes, four ways to grow your business. So it's very robust. If you're a product or service based, like this is for you. Um, it's just laying it out there on the table. It's something I always come back to with clients. So it's just a great overall um, thing. So we always give that away and it's just really fun. And then the next thing is next week we have our monthly masterclass and it's a strategic planning party. It is free. I will drop the link below. Um, it's just something, it's what I do with my one-to-one -one clients. I do it myself, um, but I've always gotten tons of great feedback from it. People will say, no one has ever asked me that before or I've never thought of that before. So it's just a really great thing to think about in your business. And I know some people um, have not done strategic planning or thought about their New Year's goals or anything like that. So this is just a great way to kind of like kickstart that. And some people maybe that did at the very beginning of the month are already losing momentum, feeling deflated, um, just not keeping up the way that they thought they would be already. So. Um, this is just a great way to kind of jump back in and get support with that and it's free you get a video and a workbook every day It's five days. Um, it's short and sweet. So it'll just it's really beneficial. I'm doing it with y'all um, so that's it, but You know what I want to talk about today. I'm pulling up my notes um, I titled this my secrets for building a multi six-figure business while having and raising three daughters um, lessons from my past seven years, so it's There's a lot of things that come up for me right now like my youngest just turned four, so we don't have toddlers in our house anymore. You know, we are getting rid of stuff that we haven't used in a while that's just not applicable anymore, and it's like a big deal for me. You know, I'm like processing all the things and um, thinking about that in terms of business, and you know, seven years ago, it never occurred to me that I would be here doing this or doing live streams or supporting so many amazing clients. And like, I work from home on my own schedule and I make way more money than I ever did working for someone else full time. And it just, it blows my mind and I'm just so grateful. And I want to share and be so transparent because um, while I do love the online space and think that it is amazing for us to cultivate a business like this, um, it is kind of a mind fuck sometimes. Um, we can get really caught up in the wrong things. There's always someone selling us something um, and we think we need to do certain things or that our business should look a certain way or we're doing it wrong or whatever. Um, so I really wanted to do this today to really like motivate you, to inspire you, to give you permission, like just see like behind the scenes of what building, you know, a multi six figure business looks like with three kids. Cause I started it um, my oldest was five months old. Um, well, when I took on my first client, so I started when she was two weeks old, but I put in my notice for where I was working and, you know, finished out the year there. And then January was when I started getting clients and one, you know, I'm having like a seven year anniversary with a few of my clients now, because we've literally, um, been together for seven years. So, um, it's just been amazing, but, um, I didn't, grow as fast as I could have. And I made mistakes along the way and um, invested in things that didn't really get me a return on stuff. And so I really want to just bring all that here and share that with you. Um, and if you're joining, please ask questions, feel free to comment. Um, that's what I'm here for. So that's what kind of spurred this conversation. Seven years, seven lessons. And I have a bonus because <laughs> just, you know, of course, why not? Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about. And I always think of the quote, um, the road to success is always under construction. And I feel like that just sums me up and sums up my business. Um, it's always under construction. Like I'm never there. I've never made it, you know, I've never arrived. Um, and that's not like a bad thing. It's just like, I love this continual growth. I love being open and willing to try new things and, you know, leaning into what feels good and just kind of seeing where that takes me. And so I think having that quote as kind of like, um, the, 
you know, theme of my business has just been really helpful. Um, I don't know who the quote came from, but, um, really just giving ourselves permission to grow and change and make mistakes and be humans working with other humans. Cause, um, otherwise it's just, you know, very stressful. And speaking of stressful, I mean, when I quit my job, like <laughs> the HR lady, I told her I was quitting and she was like, what are you going to do for money? And I was like, I'm going to start my own business. <laughs> she was like, what are you going to do for money? And I was like, I'm starting my own business. Like it was scary as shit. Like I literally would cry and think like, what have I done? Like, oh my gosh, I jumped in feet first. Um, my husband had a job. He was working. He didn't, we weren't making, you know, he didn't have a lot of money. We, I didn't buy clothes. I got our groceries from Walmart. You know, I bought their kids clothes used and, you know, on the mom exchanges on Facebook and, you know, we really didn't save any money for a few years and like, it was tight, you know, um, but we had a roof over our head. We had food. We had the necessities. So I'm not like, like we were doing good compared to a lot of people, but it wasn't like, oh, this luxurious life. And I was working, you know, night times and nap times and at 4am and all these things to make it work. I'm so grateful to my previous self for that because like we're in January now and this is our busiest month of the year. Like this is, you know, 1099s, year end, all that stuff. And it feels very easeful. Like we have great systems and processes in place. Um, we're onboarding two new clients this month at the same time as busy season. Like, and I just, I feel really good. Like we're good. I mean, it's busy, but like, it feels very easeful. It feels flowy. Um, and so I'm just really glad to be in this place and share it with y'all. So we are going to hop in. Um, let's see, let me look at my notes. Anything else I want to say? Um, and I definitely have had to change my identity along the way because, you know, before I started my business, I had been public accounting. I had been in industry as a CPA. And so switching to bookkeeping was definitely different than I did just bookkeeping for five years and then kind of had to change my identity of, you know, stepping out from behind the QuickBooks and behind the reports and behind the numbers to really like talking with people and, um, seeing what's coming up for them in their business and really like ideating together and um, problem solving instead of just being like, okay, yeah, here's your reports. Don't, you know, call me if you have some questions, but like, I'm out of it, I'm done. Um, so this is like, I'm really in it with them, um, which is amazing and just feels great, but it's also been an identity shift. So that is also something to think about um, as you move through your business. So kind of the number one piece of this, or we got seven, but the first one that comes to mind is really getting support. So the first five years were all by myself, getting up at 4 a.m. and it never occurred to me to get help. Um, you know, eventually when my daughters were, like I had two under two for a while, and you know, I did get support in daycare. So um, one went to daycare and the other stayed home, and then eventually they both went to daycare. Then they were both in daycare when I had my third, and then she was home for one, two years, COVID hit, so it kind of messed up, but she went like a little over age two. But you know, I was kind of all like doing everything myself. Um, and like, I had this very scarcity mindset that I needed to keep every penny of my business. So it didn't occur to me to get support or to get like a babysitter to come to my house because I wanted to keep every penny. Um, and now that like we have the bookkeepers, we have the website girl, we have a um, social media person who puts all the posts out there and schedules it. Um, and I get one to one support in my business because I believe in it so much. Um, and it just feels so much better. And it, that is why it flows this month. Like I know that I, you know, built these systems and I've paid for, you know, ease. Like <laughs> it's like, and it's, like I'm still taking home way more than I did when I did it all myself. Um, so that's just something interesting to look at. Cause I know a lot of us, you know, when we start a business, like we are watching those pennies and dollars and like, we do not want to spend anything we don't have to. And then realizing that like, it's okay to get support because then that leads you to do more of the revenue generating activity. So yes, pay or net income might take a dip, but then you reach kind of that tipping point where the momentum builds and then all those expenses stay the same, but you are able to go generate more revenue and have more take home pay because you have that foundation. And so that's just something I've seen. And if, if I had to change anything, I would go back to my previous self and just get support earlier. Um, 
you know, what that looked like for me was I did a group program when I switched to the advisory services and that served its purpose. Um, it kind of taught me how to make that transition, what it kind of looked like, what you kind of did in those meetings, what you were just literally, what are you doing with clients? And then kind of the process of what that looked like. So that was just great to have. And then I did a small master class or small mastermind. And that was, I mean, these things were expensive. Like the group program was like nine grand. The mastermind was like over a thousand dollars a month. And that was just with a small group of people. So now I pay for a coach and it's basically the equivalent of those, but it's, it's one to one. Like I have support, like, um, just anything like, you know, mindset stuff that comes up for me, like working through that scarcity stuff or, you know, like, is it okay to sell to this mom that's divorced and it brings up, you know, memories of like my parents and stuff and like just working through that stuff, um, has been like what I can, you know, work through to get out there and sell and really support my clients better because it doesn't help them any if I'm too scared to sell to them or shit's getting kicked up for me or whatever. Um, so that's really like what I say, like you don't have to reach a certain point in business to deserve support. Um, I know a lot of people think that like, oh, I have to be at a certain revenue or I have to be a certain client load or something. And you know, I'm not telling anyone what to do with their money, but like you'll get there faster if you have support. Like that's just what I've seen countless after supporting you know, countless clients, like that is just what I have seen to be true. And it's like, okay, you don't have to get support. You can wait until you get to that client load or revenue number or whatever or feel safe to you, but like you're just slowing the whole thing down. Um, and that is not bad, slower and faster, not one is good over the other, but you know, for someone like me who like, we need our, in we need my revenue, we need my income to contribute to our family. Um, getting there faster is something that's important to me. And so I've realized that like, you know, I make more revenue because I pay these people and because I get support. So um, that's just really the first thing to lean into. And then, you know, the second thing is being busy isn't the same as being productive. Um, you know, working with kids at home, I worked nap times and night times and I was very focused. Um, and I feel like that was probably a good thing, you know, just from coming from the corporate world to like the more unstructured, like I can do it in my own time when I want to or whatever. Um, but because I had such time restrictions, I was laser focused on what I needed to do um, and staying on top of it. It wasn't just like, oh, I have this, you know, huge capacity to just like work all day long. It was like, no, it's literally between this time and this time, this time and this time and this time. And now it's like, it looks like between nine and two because that's the parameters I have, I drop off my kids in the morning, I'll volunteer at their school, take the dog for a walk. I pick them up in the afternoon. We are doing things in the afternoon. Like I'm sit down at my computer when they go to bed, you know, that's usually around seven and like catch up on what the bookkeepers need for me or, you know, anyone else. Um, but that's basically like my parameters for work. And so it's really like looking at using time blocking and making sure that like these three things happen every day, regardless of what hits the fan. Um, you know, knowing what my plan is. And so, you know, I talk about the three S's like support, social, and sell. So even if, you know, my kids are sick and I have to pick them up from school, I'm still supporting clients in some capacity. I'm still showing up on social consistently and I'm still selling somewhere. Um, so those are the three things that happen every day. So really time blocking, you know, I give people um, a spreadsheet just as an example, and it's very granular and you can take that to start. And then if you get in a nice flow and you're like, okay, on Mondays, I do this. Um, you know, for me, that looks like money and metrics, like Mondays, Mondays kind of my CEO day um, and preparing for my meetings for the week to support clients. So um, I'm always looking at my money, looking at my metrics and then preparing reports and all that. Um, Friday's kind of follow up, like my getting everything I need from everybody, um, supporting clients and meetings Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like I have it kind of this flow. Um, so it's not like super like hour by hour, but, um, I kind of have a puzzle piece that I move around. So I have really enjoyed time blocking for that and just giving myself like a framework of what happens when, because if you have to decide what you're going to work on, it's so much harder. But if you know, like, yeah, I'm going to get to emails today at two. That gives you the freedom to go out and do these other things. So, you know, my time is accounted for. Um, I don't want to fatigue on decisions. I work out at 5 a.m. every morning. So that is like one of those decisions I just put on autopilot. Like, it's not like, when am I going to work out today? It's literally like, this happens at five. Um, 
you know, I'm doing social at this time during the day. I'm supporting clients this time during the day. So it's all fits together so that I know what's going on and I don't have to think about it in the moment. Um, so that's just something that has worked really well for me. And also when you have a big project, like if you have a project that's going to take four hours or something like that, you know, you're probably not going to have a block of time of four hours that just opens up. So that's why I really love to have the time blocking. So you can be like, okay, you know, maybe one hour a day, I'm breaking this up or one hour a week, like whatever that looks like. Um, I know we have got some people jumping on. So if you jump on, say hi, leave your questions, comments. I'm really excited to have you here. Um, but that's kind of how I look at my schedule and how I organize everything and really make sure that things happen and not have decision fatigue. Um, so the third thing that I've learned in the past seven years is setting boundaries. Um, I had to get really clear about when I do work and when I don't work. Um, because when the girls were babies, that kind of like moved and um, the boundaries kind of overlapped and it was very stressful and I felt very monkey brained. Um, I'm so glad that I read the book Hands Free Mama when they were babies. Um, so it was really about like being intentional with like your phone time and your, you know, devices. Hi, Annis. Thanks for liking my stuff. Um, so that book was just really helpful to give my, like, make me realize that like, when I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids. And then when I'm working, I'm working. And so that was what really helped me like set up my time so that um, it wasn't like, well, let me kind of message these clients and then go back to my kids and then try to do this um, because that was just too overwhelming and didn't feel good. So I definitely had blocks of time. And even still, you know, like I support clients in Voxer and, um, you know, all these kind of things in between our meetings. So I try to, you know, try to be really intentional about like, these are the times that I check it, you know, when I pick the kids up from school, I'm basically not checking any of that stuff until nighttime. You know, I'm not trying to like hop on the computer and do work or, you know, anything. It's like that time is with them and just making sure that like I set those boundaries. Um, and it's also just comes up with when you're onboarding new clients, like what kind of boundaries do you set with them? Um, or people who buy from you, you know, what can they expect the turnaround time to be or just letting people know up front, like what they can expect from you and when and setting the tone has just been really helpful. Um, because then it's not like, oh, they're texting you and it's dinner time and I feel like I'm supposed to respond. Like that just doesn't happen. And so that's been a really helpful way to set boundaries um, in my business um, and with team members, you know, letting them know like they can expect a response from me within this time. And, you know, I always let clients know, like if I don't respond in 24 hours, I missed it. So <laughs> follow up again. So that way they know like when to expect something. So that's the third one, setting boundaries. Number four is run my own race. So I have built my business while having three kids. Um, so everything looked different for me, you know, um, from how much work I took on from my marketing or lack thereof. Um, and now even how I get my continuing education, like I'm a CPA, so I have to do 40 hours a year. It's literally one hour at a time. Maybe I'll do a, continuing education that's like one and a half hours, but it's, it's pretty much done one hour at a time. And I could make myself wrong for all of this. Um, I could be like, oh, these other people are working so much more, or they've got such bigger results or faster results or whatever, but really running my own race and being okay with that was just, it, it takes the stress out. Um, my husband's coming over for lunch, so. So I was like, what are you doing in there? I'm like, I'm talking to my people. Um, but I think running your own race is so important because especially as a lot of us moms or um, wives and spouses and all that stuff, like it's just, if we look at what other people are doing or what their business looks like, it can be really um, hard and we make ourselves wrong. And so, you know, just making sure that I kind of keep my eyes on my own paper and yeah, celebrate other people and what they're doing. And wow, isn't that great? Like what potential is out there. Um, but really like running my own race, um, especially and with marketing, like I'm not going to be able to be online all the time. Like we create the content and then the social media manager posts it. And, um, you know, it's not me like on there all the time, like scheduling everything. Like we have a system for it and I just set it and forget it. Like for lack of a better word, you know, it's not like totally forget it, but um, I, I'm not always going back and like trying to rework it or trying to find the next problem. It's just like, we got it. It's good. We'll let it build my minimum. We'll let it do its thing. Um, so that's like part of that running my own race. Um, let's see. 
add some notes. Um, it's easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. And I'm all about building a business that is intentional and sustainable for you. As women, it's just, um, we have so many other things going on. And I think it's so important for us to have our own money um, and be in charge of our own money and our own finances and whatever that looks like for you. But like, we're the ones who are putting it back in the communities. You know, we're the ones sending the kids to camp and, you know, deciding um, where to buy our groceries and, you know, teacher gifts, where to get those. And so we put so much money back in for childcare, healthcare, building the community. It's just really important that we have our own money, um, at least for me. Um, and so, you know, having that perspective just making sure that this is a business and that your business is something that provides for you for years to come, not just for you and your family, but just for the community as a whole, because that is what builds the community. Um, and so that's kind of like the other piece that I like to think on. Like, it's not just like, hey, how do we make the most amount of money in the least amount of time? Like, how do we build a business that we love and we love being the owner of and that, you know, maybe gives other people jobs and, you know, provides income so that we can help our community and save for our retirement and kids colleges and all that stuff so um you know part of that running my own race is building that business that is intentional and works for me um, because that is what's going to keep me in it for the long run so we're on number five let me know if you have questions or anything and number five kind of comes into the strategic planning party this month it's really taking time to reassess I'm all about picking a strategy and sticking to it, but sometimes we just get on autopilot and we start doing things one way and we forget why we started doing it that way. Um, so I like to do the annual go goals and reassess each year. Um, I think it's a great time to do this. Um, and, you know, I used to do kind of these bigger goals um, with like a longer time frame, and I still do kind of like a one three and five year, just I like having the long term vision, um, not necessarily like goals, but um, when we take time to reassess more often, um, you know, I like doing it, like looking at each month and then looking at the previous quarter and the quarter going forward. Um, when we have those more frequent touch points, that's when we can like make more simple adjustments. Whereas if we just keep going for a really long time, and then it's like, oh, we got to like make an adjustment or turn the ship. It's a lot harder whereas if we keep doing it along the way um, it's kind of easier to navigate so um, taking time is really real you know really important to me um, doing the quarterly goals keeping up with them along the way um, and that's something we do with our team members so you know most uh, our bookkeepers have been with me over a year now um, and so quarterly meetings are good for us like we check in and we're you know talking about the work that needs to be done and all this stuff frequently, but, um, really doing like a quarterly check-in, like, okay, like, let's see, you know, what went well, what are your goals for the next quarter? Because I want them to grow as people too. Obviously I want them to just stay with me forever and ever, but like, I want to make sure that they're getting their needs met too, and that it's serving them just as much as me. Sorry, my voice is <laughs> like sitting right there. Um, so I think really taking time to reassess and remember like why we're doing things. Um, and it's also a great time to reassess, like, do I need to be the one doing this? Because when we start our business, we wear all the hats. We're the IT person, we're the website person, we're the social media person, we're the sales person, we're the bookkeeper, like whatever, like we do so many things. And it's just nice to eventually be like, wait, can somebody else do this? Do we need to keep doing it this way? Um, do we need to do this at all? You know, something that I switched to my business that's a great example is um, billing. So every month I would send an invoice and then the client would pay it. And so that was time I had to take at the beginning of every month was sending these invoices. And I looked at hiring a VA to send these out. And then I was like, well, why don't I just auto, you know, get everyone on auto pay to do it? And it just runs itself. So that's what we did. Um, of course, I had resistance kick up in my head around that about like, are the clients going to want to do that? Are they going to want to sign the form? Like, ooh, is that kind of like overstepping the boundaries? But really what I found that people were like, yes, please. <laughs> like, not like, why didn't you do this earlier? But they were like, yeah, sign me up. Um, Cause it's just one less thing for everyone to think about. So just looking at your systems and processes. And when you're going through your day, when you find yourself working on something that you're kind of like, 
getting resistance kicked up or you're kind of like, oh, this is not my favorite part of the day. Like just taking a moment to step back and be like, could I do this differently? Could someone else do this? Could we cut this out entirely? Like just taking the time to reassess along the way um, is just so helpful. Sorry, my mother-in-law is texting and calling. Um, I think everything is okay though. But um, let's see, number six. This is one of my favorites and something I lean into a lot with myself and with clients is know what your business needs from you. So AKA solve the right problem. Um, I just, after being in the online space, like there's just always someone who's going to sell you something. Like, I mean, I have people contact me all the time in DMs and emails um, telling me like, hey, I looked at your website and you could really change this, this, and this. Or, you know, hey, your Instagram profile, it could really, you know, increase your followers by this. And, and I always like respond to them and I'm like, actually I'm like a multi six figure business and I'm basically almost full. So I think I'm doing pretty good. Um, you know, not to be like a jerk, but I'm like, yeah, I could do all those things, but you know, I'm looking at the things that are working and I'm focusing on that. Like if I tried to solve every problem in my business, like I would spend so much money and so much time and it may not get me any other results. Um, something that comes up for me is the first five years of my business, I had a homemade website. Like my best friend from college literally made it. Um, she did it herself. I didn't pay her anything. Um, that was it. The pictures that I had, um, you know, were pictures that my sister took of me with the iPhone. Um, when I did post on social media, it was like an iPhone picture I took of the sunset or something. Like I built uh, six figures, you know, in five years with a homemade website and some iPhone pictures. So, um, I get so like, like I love my new website. I love, you know, the branding photos that I have. Like I love those, but those aren't the reason that people hire me. And so what I really like to invite business owners and clients to do is really think about like, what is the problem you solve? Why are people hiring you? Like if it feels good to go pay $3,000 to refresh your website, yes, do it. Um, you know, and if it's, especially if it's going to make it easier for people to purchase or book or do whatever, like, yes, I'm not saying not to do that, but don't think that that is like the thing that's going to like fix your business or, you know, getting the branding photos or getting the expensive planner or, you know, doing the, um, class about TikToks or how to make reels or anything like that's all great and fun. And if you like it, go for it, but don't go into it thinking that like, that's the thing that you're missing. It's the secret. You got to have it. Like when you have that kind of graspy energy of like, um, this is the thing I'm missing. Oh my gosh, I have to do this. It's going to change everything. Like that is just not a good vibe to buy that stuff. So if it's like, yeah, you know, I deserve a nice website and I want it to look nice. Like that is the vibe of getting the new website and getting the pictures done. Um, but yeah, going into it and people are always like, oh, but it's a tax deduction. And like, yes, true, but you know, it's not going to like decrease dollar for dollar your tax liability. So that $3,000 website refresh isn't going to decrease your tax liability for exactly $3,000. It'll be a percentage of that. So, you know, always buy what you actually need. Don't just buy things to like write it off. Um, my favorite shit screen um, episode was about that, but really like knowing what your business needs from you and solving the right problem. Um, and as the business owner, that is your job to know what your business needs from you. I always think about it like um, when my girls were babies and they'd cry and it was, you know, I'm the mother. So like, I know what they need. You know, my mother-in-law or a well-meaning, you know, family member would be like, oh, give them a bottle or do this. And it's like, actually, they just ate. Actually, we're on this schedule. And so it was up to me to know what they needed and figure it out. And as business owners, it is up to us. It's not you know, that person that sent you an email and message that your website needs work or that, you know, your social media account doesn't have more followers or whatever. Um, it's really knowing like what's the right problem to solve because our time and our resources um, are the most va valuable thing we have and, you know, money. So if we're like constantly giving our money and time um, to other people that have the answers, like our business is going to, it's not going to feel very good. And we're just wasting a lot of time and money that we could use to, you know, use it in better ways. So I think that's kind of one of my favorite ones. Um, so let me know if y'all have questions. I know we had some more people pop on, but um, number seven, and this is a big one for me too, that I've worked on, um, especially with my coach is giving myself credit. So, um, you know, just giving myself credit for how far I've come and 
you know, at this point in my business, I've made half a million dollars working part time. And so that even like, I'm already like skipping over that because I'm like, oh, that feels so crazy to say, but um, it's something I'm grateful for. And I have to remind myself to like celebrate that um, and just really giving ourselves credit for what we have done. Um, and then even the past two years, I've made more than I did the first five. And, you know, of course, I was having babies and had kids at home and like, I'm just so grateful to, for my previous self to, like, see what she went through and how tired I was and how, like, you know, like, crazy it was. Like, I thought I was going to sit down and do work, but nap time's not happening, so now I'm going to have to do it tonight. And, like, just all that that I went through, um, not making myself wrong for that, but, like, really celebrating, like, thank you, Jordan, because that's what allowed me to get here today. Um... So, you know, the first few years I doubled every year. Um, it was still slow. You know, it went from like 10,000 to 20,000. But, you know, just looking at that every year um, and seeing that growth. Because um, I think, you know, we look at our business from month to month and then the annual thing. But it's nice to kind of look at it over the whole sum of like how much money have you made since you've been in business. Or, you know, these first five years when I was literally just getting referrals and literally from, you know, QuickBooks Pro Advisor online, like I wasn't doing anything, but like, you know, I slowly was building my services and my packages um, and doing it home and doing it with kids and during a pandemic and lockdown. Um, so I think just giving yourself so much credit, like even keeping a journal um, or thinking about like one thing every day, like what can I give myself credit for? Because um, it's just so important to like celebrate those wins. I mean, that's just something that we know from like research on brains, um, just how simple our brains are. Like when we um, reach a goal, like our brain wants to keep doing it. When we celebrate that goal, our brain's like, ooh, let's make more of that happen. So just from like a very lizard brain basic standpoint, but also just from the fact that like it doesn't have to be hard. Like it can be easeful. Um, we can set up systems and we can pay people and make it easeful. Like it doesn't have to be like the struggle all the time. Um, so that's just been like really permission giving and something that I've worked on personally. Um, so that's kind of like my number seven and then the bonus, um, cause you know, I have more than seven, but it kind of is a jumping off point from that one is that giving up just was never an option. Um, you know, I give myself so much credit for that. And then like during lockdown, like I was talking to um, a mom at, she's a mom at our gymnastics class and um, she was working at home and then she was like lockdown hit and I just couldn't do it anymore. And I was like, that never occurred to me. That never occurred to me, literally like not to close my doors ever. Um, and so that's just something that I um, think is just so, so important for business owners to like, it's not like, oh, you know, I'll wait till my business works or I'll wait till it, you know, shows me that I can make this amount of money or pay me this amount of money. But it's just like, I'm not waiting. Like I'm all in. Um, it's kind of like that burn the boat mentality. Like I'm going all in and this is working. <laughs> like, um, what's his name? I think he's like the drummer of Blink-182. Am I showing my age? Um, but I read something interesting about him. Like he's covered in tattoos and that was his way of like making the musician life work was that he covered himself in tattoos. So he was basically like not hireable to anyone else because he was like, I'm going to be a musician. I'm going all in. And that was his like way of burning the boat. So like, obviously I think if people still work a job and want to do, you know, build their own business on the side, it's not like that's wrong, but just having that mentality that like I'm in this and I'm willing to stay in it until it works. Um, I'm not waiting for my business to show me that it works. I'm deciding ahead of time that it's working and like I'm in it. Um, so that is like my bonus kind of like wrap up for all of this is that um, just that giving up isn't an option. Um, no, sorry, my throat. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. Those are the seven things I wanted to run through. Um, They've just been really important to me and, you know, even working with people who are new and starting their business or people who are seasoned, um, I really feel like this conversation is just so um, permission giving and just eye opening for people because we don't realize like what other businesses are going through. Like we see like, oh, you know, 
built a multi six figure business working part time. Like it must be so easy. And it's like, you know, there was a lot of stuff I learned along the way and things that maybe I would have done different and, you know, lessons to be learned and shared. And so I really like to just kind of lay it out there on the table um, and go through those, you know, like one, getting support. Two, um, you know, making sure that like being busy isn't being productive, like being really intentional with your time, setting boundaries, setting boundaries with clients, with team members, even with yourself, like when you're available and when you're not, um, running your own race and not making yourself wrong, taking time to reassess, um, and then making sure you know what your business needs from you, AKA solve the right problem, give yourself credit, give yourself tons of credit and, um, just know that giving up isn't an option. Know that you are in it until and, you know, willing to do whatever it takes. So those are the seven takeaways. And if you're sitting here and you're like, Jordan, that always sounds great and easy, but like I'm in it, I'm doing the things, I'm not getting the results. It's really hard to keep doing the things when I'm not getting the results. Or you're like, I don't even know where to start. Like I'm trying to get my first clients. Like you're talking about doubling revenue and I just want to get some revenue. I totally understand. And you know, the thing that I always talk about is consistent content. So consistently showing up in front of your audience, showing up in front of other audience and selling, like we specifically have to connect the dots for people to buy from us. And so that's something I'm always working with clients on and that I love supporting in these free calls. I get free consistent content for consistent five figure months because literally in my business, that's when I saw the change was when I started showing up daily. Um, you know, in whatever consistency that looks like for you, like I would love to support you in a free 30 minute call. Um, that's what we work on together. We can set up a framework for what works for you, what you're speaking about, where you're showing up, kind of laying out all the logistics so that it's just really easy for you to take that and go take action on it. Because that is the thing that I've seen move the needle forward. It's not, oh, redo the website or get some more pictures or get a new planner. Like it's literally like show up in front of people who can buy from you. Um, it sounds so simple, but it's literally kind of the thing. So um, I'll drop the link for that below. We'll be back next week. The masterclass will be Monday through Friday. So I'll be popping in then to the group. So I can't wait to see you there and have a great rest of your week.